So recall we have two models under consideration. Model one is y equal to x1 beta one. This one right here. Model one is y equal to x1 beta one plus error. And then model two is where y equals x1 beta one plus x2 beta two plus error. Right now, first we're gonna consider this underfitting case. We fit model one, but model two is actually true. So we've underfit the model, okay? So let's go through some results from model underfitting. Okay, so our beta one hat in this case is equal to x1 transpose x1 inverse x1 transpose y, of course. Now let's look at the expected value under model two of beta one hat. Okay, so I've written this little under model two to indicate we're taking the expected value assuming that y equal to x1 beta one plus x2 beta two plus error is the actual true model even though we fit the first model. Okay, well that's gonna be, I'm gonna do the steps kind of fast because at this point I'm gonna assume everyone's familiar with them. I'm gonna pull the x1 out and take expected value of y, okay? So that's gonna be x1 transpose x1 inverse x1 uh, transpose, get my transpose right there, times x1 beta one plus x2 beta two, okay? So it's going to be equal to beta one, so that part is gonna be unbiased, and then x1 transpose x1 inverse x1 transpose x2 beta two, okay? And so let's just double check that our dimensions work out, which is always a good thing. X1 is, let's say, n by P1. X2 is, say, n by P2, okay? So this is, um, th this one, uh, X1 transpose is gonna be P1 by n. X2 is gonna be n by P2. Okay, so it works. Beta 2 is gonna be P2 by one. Okay, so our dimensions work out. It's always a good thing to double check that. We knew it was gonna work out. So this term right here represents the bias. So that is exactly what happens. So we can calculate exactly the bias in estimating beta one when we omit necessary covariates. Another interesting fact is if, you know, let's suppose x1 and x2 are centered, okay? Then really this is very close to the, co the empirical covariance between x1 and x2, the empirical set of cross covariances, okay? And so what does that mean? That would mean that that term is very likely going to be zero if the x1 and x2 are empirically uncorrelated. Now, there are many different cases in which we might omit covariates that are actually necessary. We might not think they're necessary, but have collected them and could have put them in, but didn't. We might know that they're necessary, but not have collected them. Or we might not know that they're, not necess that they're necessary and even then also not have collected them. So in the, that's the hardest case, because there's no way we could have possibly adjusted for those variables. We don't have them and we didn't even know that we needed them, okay? So one way that we try to combat these kinds of problems is by randomizing the levels of X1. So if X1 is randomized, so imagine if X1 is only a treatment effect and maybe an intercept, if we've randomized the levels of X1, the treatment, okay, then it'll likely be empirically uncorrelated with the collection of X2 variables, in which case the X1, X2 uh, term will likely be close to zero, in which case the bias will drop out. And that is often why we'll say that uh, randomization is a tool for reducing bias. Okay, but regardless, we can exactly characterize the bias in this particular setting, and it turns out to be this term right here. Okay, now let's go through and look at other properties of our beta one hat estimate when in fact we've underfit the model.